Hi guys, welcome back to the third part of the core data. Sorry, the second part didn't get a whole lot done aside from creating the um, updating the uh, the database, putting stuff in. But I kind of want to get all the design stuff out of the way as fast as possible. And now we're going to get the data back out of the um, the model into our database. So let's get this on. So to view controller, we are going to do a few little things. We want to make some properties. Okay, property, not atomic, rectangle flight this because I know I've kept it far longer than I thought. NS manage object context. Context. Uh, property, not atomic, retain uh, NS mutable array and R. Void two methods, get data, our old friend has been brought back to life and um, no, I'm not going to make that one just yet. I'm just going to make that show you how to delete everything. I'll do that shortly. Oops. Okay. Into your table M file. Uh, synthesize. Synthesize context. And then synthesize the RA. Awesome. Now, uh, to do, do, do. Okay. We're going to make our get data model. No model method. <coughs> Sorry if I say things wrong today. It's also been a long day today. Get data. Okay. Get data is going to reflect the request side of our. Um, I don't need my warning anyway. Make some room for ourselves. Okay. It's the same as the second half of our get data method in the delegate. Okay. So we're going to remake this again. Ms entity description. Entity equals ns entity description entity for name. A phone in context context awesome ns fetch request request uh, I'm not gonna bother with the error here because I know this works ns fetch request a lock in it we're initializing it perfect and then we want to set a few things request set fetch batch size we don't re request too many 20 is basically the most we want to get and then fetch, oops, no, request set entity entity. Okay, so it's the exact same as we did in the delegate. So all we're doing is pulling all the information out. This is different though. If you think of NS sort descriptor, okay, we want to sort these by a certain key. So sort equals NS sort descriptor, uh, a lock in it with key yeah that's the one uh, no we don't want a selector oh well in your key name ascending yes selector now we don't do anything like that okay so now we want to use this sorter but we have to do something else we need an NS array to instead of using the for loop we used earlier we're going to use the sorter array to do it all for us so array and we're going to call it sorter Okay, that's actually a very bad naming convention. Um, new array equals ns array array with objects object uh, sort. Oops. So remember before we did a loop to go through all the entries. We're going to use the sort scripter to do that for us. And then fetch to make a fetch request. No, call it a request. Request. Um, Set sort descriptions NS array new array. It has to be an NS array, can't be mutable array. Just make sure of that. And then um, NS mutable array results equals context execute fetch results. Uh, fetch, nope. I keep doing that. It's not called fetch, called results or request. Request, error. Damn it, I've got that. <laughs> and error. It doesn't exist yet, but we're going to make that right now. One. And mutable copy. Don't really need this anymore, um, but I like to do it just to make sure it's in the memory. NS error. Error. Now, our, our array, our property array, um, 
set no set r results you probably could have done it all in one go oops no self set r we're doing okay so now r a double r r array contains everything in our database sorry one second folks sorry folks someone there was calling my name in the office now because we're going to be calling get data every time we add something because we can't just reload the table view we have to get the data then reload the table view set up table view reload table view sorry reload data so it's going to reload the data every single time and of course in the one of the application loads self get data so when the app loads it'll do that okay now we have our Array. Our array contains all our details, so all we have to do now is access it when we want. Simple, huh? Okie doke. Um, do, 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 do. We want to go to our table view controller. So delete these warnings because they annoy me. Return one section. You should actually know already what we're going to do. Uh, return our count, which is going to be mutable because it's a mutable array. Now, configure the cell. This is fun. I'm not going to bother making custom cell, so we're going to use the subtitle pre-made type. So we have two variables we're going to put in: the name and number, and the subtitle gives access to two cell, two labels inside the cell. Rather than making our own one, it's easier that way. So phone. And did I forget to import phone? I did. Import phone. Import phone. Okay, phone. Let's be familiar to you, phone do, 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 equals do, do, our object at index, index path dot row nothing to do there cell dot text label dot text equals uh, phone name cell dot detail text label dot text this is our subtitle equals uh, phone dot number number string value because it's a um, NS number so now let's build and run this application I think I forgot one little bitty thing to do with the context I think I did yes I did I knew it because we're accessing the database from the delegate, I didn't set the context to have any value. At the moment, context is an empty, it's it doesn't have a connection to anything. So go into your delegate, and we want to make this instance of table. Remember table, this here gives access to everything in table. So whereas before we're using the context of the delegate, same in the, um, the when we're adding our stuff, we have our app dot App context set there, so we have that accessor to the delegate. We're going to do something similar to the um, context here. Equals, uh, what's what I call this thing? Oh, yeah, self dot managed object context. That's the exact same way as doing the um, app delegate thing we did in the detail view controller. So now we build and run, this will work. Context is now being pulled from the delegate where our um, core data is okay we have empty values here because I was messing around earlier but I'll show you what's going to happen now I'm going to add name call I Elmo numbers one two three four five okay nothing's happening here because we haven't told it to update the table view but if we rebuild I'll show you now how to get to do the proper way I'm just going to build this first there you go I am a one two three four five okay but we have to do something here to tell it to do what we want. So we're going to use NS Notification Center as one of my tutorials in, um, on YouTube. So if you don't know what this means, check it out. I'm not going to explain it here because it'll take too long. Okay. NS Notification Center, default center, add observer, observe, observer, uh, self. Oops, do, do, do. selector at selector receive notification name is going to be test. Oops, and 
object is nil. Okay, if you don't know what these are, Nail Notification Center allows you to send messages across the entire application without any need for um, any need for a import or reference. It's a very very powerful tool. Don't know why I did that. Now let's make this method receive notification. So it receives notification. <clears throat> NS notification notification. I love NS notification there. It's a really great thing to use. So if notification name is equal to is equal is equal to string test then self get data I did okay I didn't declare get data in this I did didn't I get data ah that's why it's not complete for me didn't finish off that and okay that's it so now the observer is sitting in the view the table view controller we have to make the post notification now and where else is that going to be that only can go in the add button so once this has added and dismissed the model view controller we want this to send notification so ns notification center uh, default center post notification post notification name a string test has to be called test don't forget object is self and close this off all right so there you go if these two fields are filled send notification to the other class to update the tail view and then dismiss the model view controller test and test self get data get data it's going to reload the table view with the new data perfecto I hope okay and then me and nine 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 add there we go you're adding stuff to your core data uh, table and then messing around with it Okay, I'm going to pause the video, make a new button, and put in the code how to delete everything in this table. Back to you in one second. Okay, folks, as you can see, I've added a new button, left bar button item. It's going to be the style cancel. Ignore that for now, it just needs a quick button to use. And I've made the selector delete. Delete is going to do the same thing, it's going to do a fetch request for phone in the context. And then what it's going to do, it's going to do for every object in the manage object, it's going to remove it. Okay, so we remove every single item in the database. Build and run. And cancel. Now that's okay, I didn't actually set update data table view there, but if you add a new one, Elmo. There we go. Empty database. And delete if you do it again it'll be fine it'll be empty there you go folks that's the end of this part of the series i'm going to use this later on for a probably more in-depth application but so far you've seen how to create a data model using the core data just to this fair enough it's very simple but simple to go to start then build it up you've added stuff from a different view to the same data model viewed another view again and delete it from the main view so it's a nice simple core, core data example if you want to see how complex it can get just make a basic mass detail um, template with core data and you'll see just how convoluted it can get and that's without even making data models that's just the setup Apple has given you to mess around with core data I made this way intentionally basic and simple without the uh, all the stuff it gives you because it confuses you very quickly and it gives you an awful headache so use this as an example to mess around yourselves you know build an application break it make it better and you know any problems give me a shout but as i said don't ask me to make stuff for you because i'm just not going to i'll make a tutorial but i won't make full applications for you all right folks hope that helped talk to you soon